So here are my open house basic tips. So, um, so first and foremost, you know, you guys should, you know, Google open houses, you know, top tips for open houses. That's when I started doing open houses. That's what I did. Uh, so there's always other angles, but the basics are the basics. Number one is always make sure that the open house is listed in the MLS. So um, I'm assuming it's somebody else's open house. So make sure they input that this open house is happening on the MLS because the MLS is the one that's going to put it on Zillow and Realtor.com, which is where most people look to see if there's an open house. So make sure that gets done. Number two is once that's done is use this open house as a great marketing tool. We just had a class, best marketer wins. So use the open house to post all over all of social media, right? So open house coming, come see me, uh, pictures of the house and do this all week. As you do this, you're going to get business in other ways, right? People will see that you're in real estate. Um, you know, I always invite anybody and everybody to come see me. So don't worry whether you're going to buy or not buy. I just want to see people, right? Friends, family, anybody who's looking, uh, uh, you know, to, to do any kind of real estate or just wants to come see me, come to my open house. The more bodies that are in an open house, the better, right? So if I walk into an open house and I see 10 people hanging around, I don't know if they're all buying or not, but I just know that the open house is hot and the house is hot, right? So that's always a good thing. Um, also, a couple other things you can do is uh, put the open house on Craigslist. I used to always do that, put it on Craigslist as well, in addition to having an MLS, Realtor.com, Zillow. Um, you can boost uh, your post about the open houses as well if you wanted to spend a little bit of money here and there on Facebook to kind of boost your open house. Never a bad idea. Or you can run an ad. So if you're if you're savvy enough to put together a Facebook ad, uh, you could use it as a lead generation tool that as an open house is coming. But also everybody who comes in is obviously an interested potential buyer. Um, the next thing um, is create like an invite flyer for the people of the neighborhood. So. Um, some of your best, uh, uh, you know, deals are going to come from people in the neighborhood. Number one is people in the neighborhood want to see their friends move into, into the, uh, into the neighborhood. So we want to make sure that the night before, um, or the day before the open house, um, we go out and we go either door knocking. If you don't feel comfortable door knocking, then go ahead and just have a flyer made an invite, um, for all the people that live in the neighborhood to come see you at the open house. Why? Because your open house is going to mean uh, something for the values in the neighborhood. So, you know, you could say um, a special seller's preview and, um, you know, or a special owner's preview or a special preview for the residents of, you know, Bay Lake neighborhood, whatever the case may be. And, you know, tell them to come early to your open house. Tell them you want to give them a sneak peek. Um, first of all, most of the neighbors are super curious about what Susie's house looks like anyway, right? So they're going to want to come see you, but you know, you can explain to them that, you know, you're expecting the home to sell around this price and, you know, this could mean this and that for their values and, you know, uh, and you just get a chance to meet the people in the neighborhood. The whole point being is you might get a couple more listings for yourself. Um, and once again, they have friends that want to move into the neighborhood and they'll tell their friends about it and say, Hey, there's a house in my neighborhood. I loved it. I think you'll love it. Come see it. Okay. So that's the night before the open house, uh, day of the open house. Um, make sure you start early. That's number one, right? Whatever time you think it's going to take you to set up, it's more, right? So a minimum two hours before you need to be out there putting the signs up. Uh, pro tip, uh, I usually don't wear the clothes that I'm going to be wearing at the open house to put out the signs, right? You're going to sweat. I've been in, I've been putting signs out open houses where it's torrential rain. Um, and so I'm out there putting signs out in the rain. Um, and, and so you don't want to have the clothes that you're going to use for the open house there. So what I usually do is I go to the house, you know, I have my, my wardrobe, I put it in the house first. And then I go out and I start doing my rounds to put the signs out. Um, balloons are always uh, a smart thing to do. It lets people know that something's happening today, right? Balloons wouldn't be flying around if, if, if it wasn't happening today, right? So, um, you know, going to like Party City and getting, um, you know, the, the balloons that... Um, you know, they call them high flow, you know, just get the balloons that'll last for a little bit, or you can get the cheap balloons, whatever the case may be. But tying balloons to the signs is always a smart thing to do. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, how long the open house should be, you know, I'm a big believer that, you know, hey, look, if I'm doing an open house one day, might as well be there for four hours, right? You can bring your computer, you can do work, but, you know, people come at all sorts of times, you know, and, 
And I could tell you right now that a lot of people come to open houses at the very end. Like every time I said, like, oh, this thing's from 12 to 4, at 350, 10 people show up. It's just natural. It's just what happens. I don't know why. Um, but that's just what happens. The other tip is, you know, make sure you have some flyers printed out. Um, you know, for the property, have that stack ready and, and be ready to know the things that everybody's going to ask you about, right? Everybody's going to ask you the age of the roof. Everybody's going to ask you, um, you know, the age of the AC, you know, um, you know, obviously know the specs, you know, know the square footage is off the top of your head, you know, the, the square footage of the place and, you know, any unique things that you can ask the seller or the listing agent who has it about that you should know that might be asked anything in the house, um, uh, that that you see that like man that looks interesting I should know what that is or whatever the case may be um, all that good stuff you should know about and so anything that you think uh, somebody would ask you about try to learn it if not just be just be ready to uh, text the agent and ask them hey you know you know this person's asking this what's up with that um, so make sure you know about the house um, let's see. Oh, make sure the house is in good condition. Um, you know, so you're probably if you're doing an open house that another agent uh, has as a listing, you know, you might not have as much control. But if I was talking to a seller, I'd make sure that the grass had been cut. I'd make sure that the home was clean. And that's another good reason for you to show up either early or the day before um, to the home to make sure that it smells good, looks good, looks clean. Right. That's going to make a huge difference uh, as to selling the home. OK. Um, so starting the open house so when 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 people come into the open house make sure you're friendly make sure you welcome them in uh, make sure you build a rapport you know i don't go into uh, I, I talk about the people that hey you know what brought you to the open house you know you guys live in the neighborhood how'd you find out about it you know all these different things just to kind of start the conversation uh where you're from you know um you know, and whether they're looking, you know, they might just be like, oh, we're in the neighborhood. We're just looking fantastic. I love it. I, lo I love for you to give me your opinion on what you what you hate about the house, what you love about the house. And be honest, you know, like have a real conversation with these folks, um, you know, one, because you want to build a relationship. And two, you're going to be asking them for their information at the end of this thing. And the more rapport you build, um, the easier it is to get somebody's information. Right. If you just like don't talk to them or whatever the case may be, um, you know, it's, it, you know, when you ask them for their, you know, name phone number email you know it's a lot easier when you have a great rapport built um one thing um that you don't want to do is you know follow people around the house right what i do is you say, would you like me to show you the house or you would like you guys want to take a tour on your own um and you know they might just go you know around on their own and that's fine but just don't get in their way you know um if they do want you to tour the house make sure you you let them walk into the rooms first don't stand in the middle of a room let them walk around the room kind of stay in the doorway stay in the corner um give them room to breathe don't be all all you know all up on them while they're trying to um you know, trying to look at the home and once again use the opportunity um when i'm walking around the home i'm still having conversation with them i'm asking them questions i'm building rapport um let's see and then finally, yes, uh, make sure you get their info. You need a sign-in sheet. There's digital sign-in sheets. I know uh, KB Core, I believe, has a, a great digital sign-in sheet. I'm, I, I'm, I was old school, man. I just printed out a sign-in sheet, you know, uh, name, email, phone number. Uh, I put a little note section. So when I'm talking to people while they're walking through the house, I'm learning things about them. And what, what it does is, is when they fill out, once they I get their information, which, by the way, I usually fill it out myself. I ask them the information rather than give them the sheet to fill out because, you know, people people's handwriting sucks. You might not be able to read it or whatever. So I write my own stuff. I get in and say, oh, what's your name, blah, 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 this and that. Um, and a good question asked, are you, are you represented by a realtor or uh, did you come in on your own? Those are all also good questions to ask. But the notes section of the sign-in sheet is really important because – um, it lets me remember who they are, right? You know, I'll write in a uh, Michigan football fan um, looking for their daughter, you know, whatever the case may be. So when I follow up with them, which is the next thing I'm about to talk to you about is the money's in the follow up, right? So but if, if, if you're doing an open house and you're not capturing information, you just wasted the open house, right? So that list that you're going to get of people in there is your follow up sheet. And you can, you know, and, and you can follow up with them about changes in the price. You can follow up with them and say, hey, you know, uh, I know you said you didn't like this, this, this part of the property. I found a couple more properties here that have the feature that you want. I would love to show it to you. And don't be scared to tell somebody, hey, look, I'm going to be done with this open house at four. Would you like to go look at some? 
other properties today. Um, I've sold many houses like that, right? You know, they, they'll come in at 3.30. I'll be like, just hang out for an hour, a half an hour, or, you know, go grab, go grab something to eat and then uh, meet me back up and we'll go see a few more houses. I'll pull up a few that we can go see. So you could sell another house that very day. Um, so follow up, follow up, follow up. So those are my basic tips for a successful open house. Hope this helps.